Hello viewers, this is an update session on a subject that we've already covered. So I need to introduce my guest who is David Rand of Quebec Freethinkers. I may not have got his title completely correct, I'm sure he will fill me in. Here he is. Hello David. Thank you, How are you? Thank you John. Yes, uh, uh, I'm president of the organization Atheist Freethinkers based in Montreal, Quebec in Canada. Yes, and that's probably the French word or order. Uh, well, yeah, we're we're actually called Libre Penseur Yes. Uh, now we've talked before, David, on the subject of Quebec's Bill Twenty One, which is trying to ban the wearing of the overt wearing of re religious symbols in people who work for the government, like teachers and police and prison warders and. Yes. Council workers, people like that. Now, tell me, is it correct that in Quebec you are not allowed to display these sorts of symbols in the fabric of the building of a school? Oh, um, in the school, uh, there used to be many crucifixes. Uh, most of them have been taken down. Um, I'm not sure what the law says about any remaining crucifixes. They they should be taken down, in my opinion. I'm I, I'm not sure about Bill 21. Uh, as you said, we covered this in a previous video, but uh, our viewers may not have seen that. Uh, Bill 21 does a number of things. Uh, it uh, defines what secularism is and declares that the Quebec state is secular. It adds the definition of secularism to the Charter of Human Rights and Freedoms thus giving it near constitutional status right. and it bans the religious bans the wearing of religious symbols by civil servants in positions of authority only police judges prosecutors prison guards and public school teachers while they're on the job of course only on while they're on the job and it bans face coverings for civil servants and for users who were receiving civil services and it was passed into law last june uh, a year ago yes there's some resistance to its enactment, I understand. Yes, there's a, a lot of resistance, uh, especially from outside Quebec, uh, from uh, provinces of Canada outside Quebec. There are court challenges. Uh, there, there, there were two court challenges. One was uh, an attempt to suspend the articles which banned religious symbols and face coverings, and that went all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada and uh, fortunately failed. Uh, but there is uh, another court challenge by the same people to actually repeal the entire law, not just suspend it temporarily, but to repeal it. And that is still before the courts and won't be heard until uh, this fall uh, at the earliest, uh, may, even be, may even later, uh, even later because of the, this, the health crisis we've been having. Um, the, there are three plaintiffs, and uh, they're supported by some 10 or more other interveners who oppose the bill. Our organization strongly supports this legislation. We think that uh, uh, when uh, civil servants are on the job, uh, they should not wear uh, they should not wear religious symbols any more than they should wear partisan political symbols or or commercial symbols. Uh, they should take them off when they're on the job, and then when they leave the job, they have full freedom to do whatever they want. Uh, and uh, of course, this only applies to those state employees in positions of authority. And uh, we have decided to intervene or to, to request an intervention. We haven't, hasn't been granted yet. We have to make the application uh, in support of the law. There are two other organizations, the uh, uh, Quebec Secular Movement and a feminist organization, uh, Pour les Droits des Femmes du Québec, uh, which have already received uh, permission to intervene in favor of the law, and so we will be the third organization. Uh, we think it's important to that as many as many interveners uh, participate to support the law because there are many who are opposing it, and we need to do what we can to preserve this uh, preserve this legislation. So you've got some people joining in with you here. You've got some support. Oh, oh yes, there's uh, our organization is a member of a of a coalition of uh, secular organizations here in Quebec uh, called the Rassemblement pour la, pour la Laïcité or the Alliance for Secularism. And there's um, both of these other organizations are part of that uh, coalition. And there are other organizations like the Quebec Association of uh, 
uh, of North Africans for Secularism uh, and, and other organizations. And uh, so three of us are actually intervening. Um, the Secularism in the law is, is defined by four principles. Uh, there's equality of treatment for all, freedom of protection of freedom of conscience, uh, religious neutrality of the state, and separation between religions and state. And these, all four of these principles uh, are essential, but the last one, separation, is probably the most important because without it, the other three are weakened. If religions and the state are not separate, then uh, the state is not completely neutral and freedom of conscience is compromised uh, and equality as well. Uh, if, if, um, if employees of the state are allowed to wear religious symbols while on the job, uh, this constitutes a form of passive proselytizing, a sort of religious advertising while they're on the job. This is especially problematic in the school system where uh, the, the people who they're teaching are children who are vulnerable. And uh, this should be, uh, should be illegal uh, so that, uh, so that the, the freedom of conscience of the, of the school pupils and of users of serv civil services are, are protected. Interestingly, if you were in France, it would be illegal. Yes, yes, that's already the case in France, and uh, uh, and also and not just in France. There's also uh, in some parts of Switzerland, Belgium, and Germany, there are bans on uh, religious symbols, and also there are bans on full face coverings in many countries in Europe and Africa, including uh, several Muslim majority countries. So it's this legislation is not exceptional or particularly dramatic. It's uh, it's quite moderate by European standards. Hmm. Did I hear that there's some some of the Muslim opponents are uh, claiming victimization? Oh yes, I mean there there are there are Muslim opponents of the law and there are Muslim supporters of the law. Uh, oh. There there are, there are many Muslims who who move to uh, places like uh, Quebec or Canada or or uh, countries. And which do not have a Muslim majority because they wanted to get away from mm. the the overwhelming uh, mm. domination of the of the country by mm. by fundamentalist uh, Muslim. The, the Islamists are are getting very strong. The more fundamentalist Muslims are, have a great deal of power uh, in Muslim majority countries. And uh, for example, one of the one of the organizations in the coalition I referred to earlier is the Association of uh, Quebec Association of North Africans for Secularism. And you know they come from countries like Algeria and uh, Morocco and other countries in North Africa, and they fully support uh, secularism and, and this law uh, for the reasons I've explained. So, what's the next stage in the process? Well, uh, the next stage is that um, our lawyer will uh, submit a request to intervene. The court will rule yes or no, and we hope that we will be accepted. And then, uh, then when the case goes before the court, uh, uh, the judge will hear all of the interveners, those for and those against, as well as the, the, the three plaintiffs. There are three plaintiffs. One is a, a, a young woman who wears the hijab all the time. Uh, and the other two plaintiffs uh, who are in support of her against Bill 21 are uh, the National Council of Canadian Muslims and the, unfortunately, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. I find it very uh, tragic that uh, a civil liberties organization would so foolishly uh, oppose a law which promotes human rights and which promotes civil liberties. Yes, it's a conundrum, that one, isn't it? Yes. Listen, David, I wish you every strength in your campaign. And uh, if there's anything else we can do from AAI, just, just call. Well, uh, I would like to say to anyone listening that uh, we have a fundraising campaign to pay our legal fees for this intervention. We're a small organization with, with limited resources. So if you can contribute a few dollars, that would be great. And uh, you can go to our website, atheology.ca. That's A-T-H-E-O-L-O-G-Y dot C-A. And there'll be a link to our uh, legal fund where you can... Uh, make a contribution if you're able to do that um, and you can there's also a lot of uh, articles on the website concerning uh, 
concerning the case, concerning secularism in general, and concerning other issues of, of interest to atheists. Um, and you can, you know, uh, read up on uh, on the various issues involved. We see this uh, this um, banning of religious symbols for employees uh, as a question of actually professional ethics. That mm -hmm. is, if a person, uh, if one is a school teacher or a civil servant on duty, then it it, it is a matter of being professional. Uh, not to force your point of view onto the students or onto users mm. uh, by displaying uh, symbols of an ideology, political ideology, religious ideology, or, or commercial even. Uh, there's already in Quebec uh, a Public Services Act which forbids civil servants from partisan political behavior uh, on the job or to a certain extent even off. Why should a religious ideology be able to indulge in this kind of advertising what a political one can't uh, and, and religions when they when they start to display themselves in this way especially in civil services they, they become political if they were not already yes that makes perfect sense to me David I will put your a link to your address where people can donate yes on the video thank, thank you, you very much for the update okay thank you thank you bye-bye bye-bye Thank you.